This video is picking up right where the video two videos back left off. We are in part 070 loops, and we're going to look at break and continue. Never mind my little comment here that says I'm skipping this. I am not skipping this. All right, so first we're going to look at break. And what I've got here in terms of my code is a while loop, although you can also do it with a for loop. And I'm going to ask the user to put in a value greater than zero. Now, if the value that they put in is less than or equal to zero, I'm going to display some output and then run the break command. And we'll see what happens when that runs. Otherwise, we'll skip this code and we'll display something out and just increase n by one. We'll display the logarithm, the natural logarithm of a. You can't take the natural log of zero or negative numbers, so this will prevent us from doing that. And then after the while loop is finished, we'll display out the value of n and we'll display that we're done. All right, and we'll dive back into the code here in a second, but let's run it and see what happens. Enter a value greater than zero. Great, there you go. And it takes the natural log of that. And then I do it again. Great. And then I say, no, I'm gonna enter a negative number and hit enter. And it says, no, 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 you must enter a positive number. This loop will terminate. N equals three and we're done. So we see that the loop stops running. The loop was going to repeat up to 10 times. We started with n equals one. We said while n is less than or equal to 10, and then we increased n by one down here. So the loop should repeat up to 10 times. But what break does is that it immediately ends the current loop. You don't need any of this comment right here, right? That's just comment. The command is literally just the word break, nothing else. So when the word break is reached, the most recent loop that is running, the inner loop that is running, will quit and will go right down to the end of it. Not to the end of the if statement, but to the end of the loop. And then we'll run this code down here. And that if is quite important. It does not make any sense to have a break that is not both inside a loop, whether it's a while loop or a for loop, but also inside some sort of condition. It could be an if, or it could be an else if, or it could be an else, but it needs to be trapped inside of some sort of condition. Because otherwise, it's always going to run. And then you're always breaking out of your loop, and then your loop isn't repeating, so why did you write a loop in the first place? It only makes sense to have a break both inside of a loop and inside of some sort of guard, some sort of condition where it may or may not run based on something being true or false. And it works the exact same way with for loops. Uh, you can uncomment this and try it out for yourself. Link to this code is in the description. Also, I should note that all of this code works exactly the same in Octave as it does here in MATLAB, but I'm gonna continue onward and show you the continue statement. No pun intended there. All right, so here's the continue example. It's pretty much the exact same while loop, and it could just be a for loop instead, except for a little bit of what gets printed out. And in place of a break, I have the word continue. And so let's see what happens this time. So enter a value greater than zero. Sure, there you go. And then do it again, because the loop is repeating. Okay, great. And we see n counting up this time. I'm not sure I printed that out before, but I could have. And now I get stubborn. I say, no, I'm not gonna. And it says, you have to enter a positive number. But then it lets me try again. The loop just goes around again. And now I can try it again. Or I can be stubborn and not do it again. And then I get another chance. But once I've gone around 10 times, then the loop is finished. Now it prints 11 because n got increased, um, but it went around up to 10. So the big difference between break and continue is that break ends your loop. You go right down to the end and move onward. With continue, I like to think of it as a skip. We skip all the rest of the code in the loop, but we jump back up to the top and run from the beginning of the loop. So we don't need this comment at all, that's meaningless. It's literally just the word continue, all lowercase. The condition does get evaluated. If in here I made n equal to like a thousand, it would seem like this was a break because the continue would say go up to here and we would check is n less than or equal to 10 and that would be false and then it would jump down to the end. Now that would be silly. I mean, I could just put a break in here if that's what I wanted, but I wanted to let you understand. I wanted to make sure you understood that this does get evaluated when the continue is reached. And if this was a for loop, actually, let's just run it as a for loop. Let's see what happens then. Enter a value greater than zero, sure. Sure, sure, and now no. Let me enter a negative number. All right, 
Nope, you have to try again. Okay. Notice that n equals 5 was not printed. It went from n equals 4 to n equals 6. Now that's because this display down here and the n equals n plus 1, although that actually is irrelevant, that didn't have any effect. It's being controlled by this up here. This was not displayed because the continue says to skip all that. However, when we went back up to the top right here, the for loop moved n forward to the next value in the vector. That is what happens when using continue. All right, and that, that's actually it. Those are my break and continue examples. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to time your code and see how long it runs.